Hello, time travelers. I've been playing this game. Ebony, the king returns, farming, and how I got to level 23 in only 14 days. Well, you probably already knew that if you read the thumbnail. But I did a lot of stuff in the game that other players kept asking me why I was doing that stuff, and I did it all without watching any YouTube videos. So that's what this video is about. This is my look of disapproval. So, subscribers can just sit back and be entertained at the uh, frustrating nature of me playing this thing constantly in order to get ahead. That's the first tip. You have to, like, look at it all the freaking time. And you spend about 5 to 15 bucks a, a week on it because you realize you spent up all of something. But you can still level up just at a slower pace without spending any money, honestly. So, don't consider this video an actual guide, just some tips and tricks that I figured out in my first two weeks. Like, for example, if you're around a bunch of regular enemies that are super easy to beat, keep sending your lowest level general to fight them, and it'll level up faster. And get it up to, like, level 5, and then switch it out for another one. That way you don't have to spend experience points on it. And the game has little resource spots that you occupy that take hours to get you back resources, but it's faster just to attack those regular enemies and you win resources randomly from them. You get more. It's weird. It's like if you, it, the game rewards you for being constantly doing stuff where you have to tap it and concentrate on it. And if you go away and you say, okay, I'm going to send my army to go collect these resources, it takes forever. So based on your interest in uh, what I do in this video, I may do a future video. So make sure you beg me in the comments what you want to see in the next video. And without further ado, let's get into the main content. Mm. Mm. Uh, do the video. Tell you how to do the things. What you want to do when you wake up and you still have epic bedhead hair. Epic. Is if you got your phone and the game's already running and you have to leave it plugged into a charger because your phone will die if you leave the game running. You can actually close the game and whatever you're doing will keep running on the server. But uh, here's my castle parked right right there. And right here you can see I have one army still out gathering resources and if I tap it and if I tap it you can tell them to return or whatever. But that means my other three came back and I can check the results. So if I go to mail and then on the left, go to reports. There's a report of coming back, getting 2.6 million food resource from a farm, plus this other stuff. And there's that zombie that I fought when I woke up to go pee, and I, and I fought a couple things, and I sent some of my armies back out to do more resources. Because you wake up to pee, and you literally spend an hour and a half playing this freaking game. You might also have had one of your armies exploring a relic and see the weird things that come back from that. Since I just woke up, there's all these random enemies around my castle, which are going to give me a bunch of easy wins. So attack, make sure winning odds says extremely high, because that's going to reduce your wounded and increase your chances of winning, obviously. Then I tap my first preset that I made on the top, and I'll just use two of my subordinate cities. I'll explain that in a second. Hit march, hit another one, attack, extremely high. Choose a general because the other general is busy right now. Choose only two subordinate cities because I have six right now. You start out with one. Well, you start out with zero and then you get one. You know what I mean? You eventually get more. And you want to wash, rinse, repeat. Just keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. I'll show you the reason why. If you go to this three dots thing on the right, and then you go to generals. And let's say Princess Lucy here, which I've appointed her the mayor of a subordinate city, which means whatever stat she has, the armies in that city get that stat. So you can also boost the production of gold or resources in that city, etc. blah, blah, blah. But if I tap on there and go to enhance, the cost to enhance that general is in these weird badges on the right, which I have 2,056 in my inventory. That means I fought 2,056 different monsters or whatever, and I get one from each. And I also have 10 million gold right now, which is more than the 3.2 million gold it needs for me to upgrade her to three stars. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do that right now just because it's kind of expensive, but you get the idea. You need to constantly get, be getting these badges things. Oh, and look, there's a golden goblin. You ever see one of them? You want to make sure, again, it's extremely high and send a really good general 
make that super strong or high level as it were because you're gonna get a bunch of gold back from that fight and obviously when you get up to take care of your epic bed head um distortions distortions i, I kind of think of a good word you're still playing it because you have to play this game freaking constantly to get ahead oh there's a boss and i'm not strong enough to fight this yasha boss because if i hit attack it says extremely low so there's one i can be now you can do a regular attack or you can do an alliance war but you have to be a member of an alliance message here fondo and i am more on that later i'm gonna hit alliance war because it's gonna get me more loot and points for things use my preset and start that and it says rallying see that and if i go to an alliance Man, there's a lot of stuff going on there I gotta catch up on. Hit Alliance War, and you see Haruchan! Um, started one, but they're too far away, so the numbers are red, so I can't join. But there's mine. Nobody can join, because I'm too far away. And they used to ask me a bunch of times, like, Rob, what are you doing? You're so far away. And I'm like, Alliance Wars give you more things. You want to have more things. Come down here if you want to join my Alliance things. What sits that I'm doing, but otherwise, that's what I'm doing. So then Alliance help is when you're doing stuff like researching new buffs to your city or building buildings you can help people by knocking off a couple of minutes of their wait time for that thing to be done and you just hit help all allied science is that you can donate resources to get buffs for everybody in the alliance and right now the alliance leader has alliance capacity four as highlighted with this brown box what's it brown so i'm gonna spam the donate button egg bacon spam and sausage without the spam I mean, now it says I gotta wait four hours for it. I do that anymore, or I could pay 448 freaking gems, which are expensive and rare. And no, I don't think so, guys. And there's Alliance gifts, and I'm not 100% on how those happen, but people oh, send you gifts. It's Evil Bedhead, you again. We've talked about that before, other me. Uh, I'm about to, you know, groom. Obviously. Don't give me your evil diabolical monologues. Wait, evil, what? Pretty soon you'll be. Doing devious plot twists. Plot twists? Go away, other me. You're not uh. in this scene. <laughs> but the best way to find bosses to fight is to search in a spiral around your castle. So move the screen until you see the little thingy what's up on the bottom that says how many kilometers away you are. And just go in a circle. Oh, by the way, there's a relic. I was exploring that before and it gets you rare items anyway scroll in a circle and watch that number and gradually let that number get bigger and check can i beat that yet no i'm not strong enough can i beat that one yet no i'm not strong enough there's one i can do oh i'm out of stamina already i'll just use a stamina item and what's crazy is that it, it resets you back to your castle. So you gotta go to Alliance, Alliance War, hit the coordinates under the creature you're attacking or boss or whatever, and then it takes you back there and you can go back extremely low, can't fight that one. And what I'll do is go like this and hit add bookmark. Okay, and then you go around and do 30 kilometers. Bookmark. Crazy high. This is the part where you look at your life and go, man, well, I'm in such a mess right now. All I've been doing is playing this game. I wish I could clean some all of this up. Some all of this? Some all of this. But I must play this game. I must play. Why? I'm gonna attack this other one with another general that I have that gives me 10% chance for a double items. March. Now they're all busy. Now get your life in order and wash some dishes. Man, I wish there was someone else that could play this game for me when I'm busy. Here's the hospital. I got some wounded from previous battles, 4,375. And on the bottom is the cost to heal them. And those are your resources that you gotta got gather all the time. And you also get them from battles. Now, if you have speed up items, which 
try to try to keep up. There's a lot of stuff going on. You, you can tap it and then hit speed up. And then see, I have six hours and 11 minutes. I can use speed ups that are made just for healing, like the 15 minute speed up for healing, or I can use the general ones. And I have a lot of speed ups because I buy them like twice a week with actual money. You have a problem and this game is sucks. So let's say for example, I'll do four of the 60 minutes and then two of the 30 minutes. I have an hour and 10 left on it and I'll do two more 30 minutes since I have so many 30 minute ones. And then I'll go back and then I'm already waiting for help, which is the same thing as Alliance Help and me helping people, they can help me. So I'm gonna let them finish off that 10 minutes. Oh, look over here. I'm finished with making traps. What traps are, are things that go around your castle when people are attacking you. And you need to make a mix of fire arrows, uh, fiery stick things, rocks that they roll at people, and regular stick things. I'm also building up on the cheap ones because you want like 10% of your ones, just like armies, you want them to be the cheapest ones. So those are the ones that die first or whatever. And look at, I'm building curiousers. What? Curiathers. This is your siege machines. Same thing goes here. I'm gonna go back down and get 14,000, 12,000, good. So I'm gonna go back to the top one and keep making my top one. And this one is where you make your ranged archers right now I'm making spearmen they, they throw spears and this is where i'm making my curiousers curiousers if you hit view you can just see what curiousers are curiousers mounted warriors or whatever and then this other one is where you do um um you're just soldiers guys yeah soldiers guys soldiers guys your keep is this building in the middle and it does all kinds of stuff like makes your army stronger it makes your army bigger and you go there every day and you hit levy and that gets you gold. I've already done that today because I was up at 3 a.m. when the server reset and it was midnight at somewhere else in the world, wherever this game is run from. But to actually make your army size bigger, because my, like mine is 113,000 right now, you upgrade your rally spot, which is this thingy what's it. Don't ignore this thingy what's it. And one more that's really super important, which is the army camp right there. So my highest one is level 22. So whatever your highest army camp is, it adds to that. So let's say detail, training capacity, training speed, power. I think it's the power. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause 74,000 plus 32,000 is 106,000. But then I also have other army camps that I'm doing. And all these things floating above these buildings are resources I can gather that way or I can just do the floating hand. The floating hand. And that does all your, your stuff and things. And that's called a warehouse. And you gotta keep that upgraded relatively to the same level as your keep. That's the best way. And then there's another one about march size and sending more troops. When you're doing an alliance war and you're actually close enough to other people for them to join you, you have to make that number bigger because if you've already sent 100,000 troops, and your rally size is 100,000. No one can join you. Lame. It's so lame. That's your war hall. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Your embassy. You have to upgrade both of those back and forth. And it won't let you do one until you do the other. And then you won't let you do that one until you do that one. So you go back and forth. I hear a lot of chong, chong, chong. Which means I gotta go back out to the world map and attack more things because all my troops are coming back. Oh, my troops have returned to the city. Ah, ah, undesired wetness on my phone screen. Stupid water drop. <sighs> You're gonna wanna wear some cheap blue blocking glasses so that the staring at your phone screen doesn't freaking make your eyeballs dry up and fall out of your skull. Dry up and fall out of your skull. Oh, and I'm sorry for the background noise. I'm running AC in here. Because I, it's the summer and I don't need any more explanation than that. And I've got Discord up here on my laptop. You wouldn't necessarily have to have this, but you can if you want. So you can find the uh, Discord of whoever's running the Alliance and chat with them. And they've been bugging me a lot lately. Like, why are you not near the Hive? The Hive is where all the people in the Alliance cluster together 
and I keep explaining it to them every freaking day, and they'll still get it. But I summarized it for the Alliance leader. Alliance battles near the Hive are inconsistent. You have to wait for someone stronger than you to start them. So if someone's busy or something, and they only do a couple and they walk away. And then the more active players there are in an area, the less there is to farm, like resources or enemies to fight. One, two, or three people together is the most efficient, even if it's just one person. And I have moved around and people are like, what are you doing? And I explain it. They're like, oh, and they come and teleport by me and then we share the spoils, the, the loot from fighting the monsters. You need to fight regular enemies to get badges to upgrade generals. You can't do that near the hive because everyone killed the weaker ones already and the stronger ones give too many wounded and wounded cost too much resources in the hospital. You also get other items from regular enemies that you get in a much lower quantity near the hive like Wishing Coins, Fenrir Fangs, Garuda's Feathers, etc. Fighting regular monsters gives you items that you could use to do other things. Like the Fenrir Fang allows you to summon a creature that you can attack and it drops stuff all over the battlefield for you to pick up. You also find more witches, celebration squads, and goblins by moving around the map. And these are special things that are not regular monsters. That you things that are really rare, they're hard to find. And if you go somewhere where no one else is, you'll find a few. You also find other event related things around the map like Arctic Castles. Like I've done all the Arctic Castles I can fight today for the event and I'm ranking like 20th. Doing alliance battles versus doing regular battles attacks gets you more alliance points to spend in the alliance store. Now I might not be right about that so tell me in the comments if, if, if I'm right or wrong because I did a direct attack to a monster of one kind and level and then I did again with an alliance battle to another one and I compared the reports. I think the alliance points might be the same but doing the alliance battles does show the other people in the alliance that hey this is where I am you can click on this to go where I am and you could share in these battles and you only have to send one troop out and you get all the same loot as me doing alliance battles give you other members in the alliance alliance boss packages in their items inventory to open and that's just from doing an alliance battle even if no one joins they get extra loot in their items in summary, staying near the Hive 100% of the time is extremely limiting and slows down the progress of the individuals in the Alliance. Let's see what I want to do right now. I could also go in the Alliance thing, so if anybody's fighting anywhere around the map at all... Ooh, look, DKA331 is real active right now. She's got two... she or he, I don't know. She's got two things going on. I could tap the coordinates, see where DK is. DK's over here. Since they're super busy, I'm going to teleport right next to them. Just going to tap on the open area, hit teleport, and I can move it around so where it doesn't interfere with anything that's there, and then hit confirm. Yes, use advanced city teleporter. Burp. And then let's go into Alliance battle, and then Alliance war. I got 11 seconds to join each of these. Do, see if I can do it real fast. I need to hit reset, and I need to only send one horse. That's what they call it. It's one mounted troop is what it's called. Carrier first. Joined. Now each troop type uses different resources just to go out in the battle and the worst one is archers. So ranged attacks. So you need them for certain enemies but they, they use a lot of stone like in their arrowheads or to throw rocks because the bottom end conscripts or whatever they're called. But you don't have to stop playing the game to get something to eat or to do chores or something. No you don't. Just play the game constantly consuming your life. It's fine. Everything is fine. This is fine. And you can play the game while doing your workout. You just have to, you know, attack some stuff and go do your workout. And now I'm attacking stuff. And you can play the game while, you know, doing chores around the house, like cleaning the toilet. Grass. Scrub them chunky chunks. Before I start my workout, I'll uh, check if anybody else is doing Alliance War near me and help people and go to items and unpack things. Lots of things. So many things. And you can play the game while uh, finally getting around to organizing your kitchen because it's gotten so horribly like cluttered ever since you started playing this game. It's so hard to pull myself away to take the recycle out. 
and y you can uh, do your workout while uh, uh, playing this game. But I first gotta hit the floating hand thing. Floating hand thing. It shows you where to put your actual hand to push the thing to get the stuff. And it goes. Blah, 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 blah. Do some research. Make sure that's going. Do some research factory. Make sure it's producing materials. Use all of these to see if I get myself upgraded to the next level. Nope. My monarch level. I didn't even put any green in this little bar on the right. Whoa. Did we just experience a temporal event? Ah! I needed to work out and make supper and all these other things. Now I have to go back in time. Emergency temporal shift! Huh? Oh! Back in time! Do my freaking workout! So Jet took over that subordinate city. Oh, there's a purple one. Do your workout! And you can play the game while you're preparing your mysterious stew meal. Mysterious. Just because this game uses the word mysterious a lot. Like the mysterious relic, which is a thing you pull up in a menu, and you go to it. Explore the mystery. And you explore it for hours and hours and hours to get stuff. It's mysterious. Or the mysterious spiritual beast. It's a mystery. Tap on it, and it says it's an animal. What? And it has stuff. Huh? And it's an valuable event. Okay. But it costs money. Spend money. It's mysterious. Ooh. So mysterious! Sarcasm! <laughs> and if you're into spending money, there's the mysterious gift. That you have to do a billion activities to unlock the ability to spend money. To get these things? Or... What? It's a spending money mystery! Hey! I wanna play the game! Oh. Yeah, I guess just a minute. Just a minute for what? You've been playing that game all freaking day. This week's dad joke thing and enjoy this random well, thing. Well, do it on your phone already. Show the things. Yeah, okay, all right, fine. Don't get all flustered and stuff. And now, enjoy this random thing. Good. This random thing comes from Crab. The Crab you can't talk right. Hush. Shut your nuggets. Casual Christian Comedy 2 on Facebook. He says, I'm here to tune your guitar. And dude says, I didn't call for a guitar tech. And he says, your neighbors did. Because he doesn't know how to tune it and he sounds horrible, obviously. It, right. But I'm, I'm thinking of getting back into working on my guitars and doing that on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in seeing me tinker with that kind of stuff. And now, dad joke time. My dad sent me this dad joke from... This Facebook page, it says, Bread is like the sun. It rises in the yeast and sets in the waste. Yeah, because bread makes you fat. Because it's all carbs and has to be converted into body fat. And then you have to be fasting before it will change it into ketones. And blah, blah, blah. And then you can lose weight. Good. Good job, other me. That is true. That, that, that's why we don't eat bread. Can I play the freaking game now? Yeah, go ahead, I guess. Sweet. Your turn. And now, awkward end screen. Because nobody ever makes a good end screen, so why not just no make it awkward forth. on purpose? You need, need another Viking. Hey, other me, why don't you suggest a video for people to watch? Okay, he's not paying attention. Oh, that's awkward. Click over here to see when my RTX 3090 came back and I finally got to put that back in my mining rig and I was playing that game while doing it to keep myself, you know. And click down here because algorithms and whatever YouTube thinks is best for you. you got, you got to do the algorithms, I guess, and whatever. And then click over here to subscribe to the channel and click down here. Check out my music soundtrack channel because I make the music that you were listening to in the background this whole time.